Jij is aangeschakeld op die grote ontbijt, grote film 90.5 in kanaal 144. Of kijk niet, ons eerste gast in die atelier. En jy het daar definitief al op die televisie gezien. Uh, I've waited a long time for an interview because I'm so curious about what she's doing um, for a living and where she's heading. So, Dr. Adriana Marais, and she's the head of Innovation SAP Africa. A big welcome. Thanks. Thanks so much for having me. Um, I'm glad you're still here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start there. Um, we're going to talk about Mars. You're one of the final hundreds yes, um, of the people. And, and, and in the beginning, when uh, the first time I, I read it, I thought it's, it's a hoax. You know, so I really had to Google the guy from, from Holland and realize, no, this is not, this is, this is a true story. It's amazing. But we're going we're gonna to start with you first. Uh, where did you grow up? Um, I grew up in Peter Maritzburg, well, I was born okay. in the Eastern Cape, grew up in Maritzburg, studied in Cape Town, now living in Joburg, so all over the place. What? Travel, travel is my game, as you may have guessed. Okay, yes, travel <laughs> is your game, you want to travel for. So, a school in Peter Maritzburg? Yes, yeah. What uh, school was it? Uh, Scottsville Primary and St. John's High School, yeah. Why not food tracker? Because you're a Marie. <laughs> <laughs> that might have helped. It <laughs> might have helped. Speaking Afrikaans so early in the morning, yeah. And then at school, you know, w were you into science? Biology, stuff like that, or were you I did, sporty? I did, uh, was it nine subjects, I think. I had to get special permission because I wasn't prepared to drop any of them. So, wow. uh, bit of an overachiever, always loved learning. It's the second overachiever for the week, our yeah. guest yesterday as well. So we'll, we can Maybe teach we you the get, same Afrikaans word. Yeah, we should get the message, your name. Yeah, we'll make yourself begin back. Yeah. So, are the Afrikaans for overachiever, do you want to hear that? Yeah, please. It's a plichie. Plichie. Yeah. Okay. So just tell people like plichie. Ach, so plichie, yeah. yeah, so plichie. <laughs> <laughs> so then um, studies after school. Where, where did you study? So then I went to Cape Town. Um, yeah, to very, very keen to be independent, leave home and go as far as possible from a hometown, Peter Maritzburg. So I went to Cape Town, big city, loved it. Um, yeah, then travelled for two years, then back to Durban to do my master's and PhD in quantum physics. Yes. So I studied physics because I wanted to be an astronaut initially. Um, also because mm. I didn't get into the jazz program because I didn't have music as a subject in high school. Amongst all my subjects, music, unfortunately, wasn't one of them. <laughs> oh, no. So then I got involved in quantum physics and then read the article in the newspaper, call for volunteers for one-way trip to Mars. My mm. heart stopped. Uh, I was actually glad that it was advertised or, uh, as a one-way trip. Of course, mm. that reduces the competition significantly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it helps. So, and, and I yeah. think you've got to be in shape because that, that airspace thing is going to be very small. Um, your PhD, it's entitled Quantum Effects in Photosynthesis. Yes. Synthesis. Then I can't even say thesis. <laughs> I can't even say it. That's the thing. That's why it's I wanted huge. to try. Green, green plants. So, so it is so... It, quantum mechanics. Yeah, even your, even your masters, the stuff you studied, I can't even, you know, I can't <laughs> even say it. You know? So it's really difficult. So for, just for, like for the Garner Street, quantum biology, just explain mm. what that is. Yeah. So um, I've always been a great believer in collaboration and I think uh, we've done a lot of work in pockets of expertise in our knowledge, but like now we need to work at looking at similarities and, and joining these, these topics that we've learned about. So quantum physics and biology meet in the field called quantum biology. So the idea is to look at living systems on very small scales. So okay. I think we know if quantum mechanics deals with those very small things that we can't actually see, but that make our phones function, our computers yes. function, lasers built on quantum mechanical principles. So mm. it's not a mysterious, fuzzy-wuzzy theory that people have not understood clearly. This is the underpinning of your devices functioning um, and lasers and many other devices and developments uh, have been based on quantum physics. So, mm. yeah, looking at life, very small scales, each molecule in the plant or the bacteria that does photosynthesis, how the photons, so these are particles of sunlight, are absorbed into the organism and turned sure. into energy. Mm. Why do we care? Of course, because nature is a wonderful thing and we'd like to understand more how it works, but also because we want to use sunlight energy for our own activities. We want to improve the efficiency of our solar panels, of our photovoltaics. Um, and if we look at how nature does it, of course, uh, nature's been doing it for 4 billion years, according to the fossil record. Photosynthesis has been around for 4 billion years. So it does it pretty well, um, pretty efficiently, and mm. uh, we would do well to understand it and try to mimic it in our own devices. Wow. Okay, let's talk about interior decorating um, <laughs> and uh, how to get to the mall. No, is, uh, is <laughs> it difficult? <laughs> is it difficult or is it frustrating? You know, just going on a date and realizing that the, the field you're an expert in is a bit, you know, over the normal guy's head. You know, is it, or, or how do you balance it? Because it's really academic and, well, I think it was, and your whole I, life's been academic. I think it was Einstein who said, if you can't explain it to an eight-year-old, you don't understand it. Oh, or, okay. or you could use your, your grandmother or someone who's from a different era to try and explain something to you. 
no, I think uh, even within your field, mm. people ex people specialize so much that you you can't. It's, sometimes you have to spend some time explaining to the guy sitting in the desk next to you exactly what you're doing. So yeah, exactly. this is normal. <laughs> was was this always a passion for you? Something that you always imagined yourself uh, focusing on and and specializing in, or was Physics. it yeah specifically? No, I mean, if it wasn't for my mom convincing me not to drop science in school, I would have. For me, it was one of the less interesting subjects. Mm. Is it? I was doing French drama, art, history. Yeah. But you, I think you can still be an actress. Yeah, you'll be able yeah. to pull it off. I mean, you're, you're, you're going to be the only actress in Mars if you start now, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so now, Baz Lansdorp, if I say it now, yes. or Baz, um, did you, did you, have you met him? Or uh, not yet? No, I've met Arno Wilders, the co-founder with Bus. So okay. Bus is the busy spokesperson at the moment. So yes. I haven't managed to meet up with him in the correct location yet. But. And and their background, I mean, what what are they doing to start this Mars One mission? Because just for background, that's the guys that started and say, listen, we're going to send people to Mars. Mm. Um, they they probably got the backup. They've got the know-how. They're working on it. You know, it's just a bit of background about them and the whole project. Mm. Yeah, so um, in 2011, they sort of announced or came up with a plan first, founded the project. Um, and in 2012, they were already sending out calls for volunteers. Um, the idea is to demonstrate livability on the surface of Mars. So they believe it's possible that it can happen in their lifetime. And I think we're living in a fascinating era now where we're no longer looking to government institutions or agencies to, to perform things for us, in fact. Mm. Mm, let's not go down that route too far, but we've maybe lost faith in these institutions being the be all end all, like holders of all knowledge. Mm. Now the individual has the power because of social media, mm. um, like the global communications network that we have. Uh, individuals now have the power to say, this is the project I want to do and actually gather the funds and the skills and the support to do that. So this mm. is exactly what they've done. Just maybe, I don't know whether this question is actually suitable, but I'm just going to pop it. Like someone that's maybe not as educated as you are in the field of physics, don't you sometimes feel like this is like a death sentence? Like you're going a one-way ticket and you don't know whether you'll be able to come back. Have you ever considered that? Or is, is the field of study so in, intense that you know that there, there are some possibilities? I mean, the only reason we're able to propose this mission and hopefully achieve it is because of technology. So uh, I think it's, uh, of course, you need to be skilled in, in working and fixing and maintaining and uh, operating the technology. But at the end of the day, the technology is going to be what's going to keep you alive. Mm. And I mean, people say, are you brave? Are you crazy? But I think early explorers were far braver. And I'm almost envious that, like, that we have so much information now about the place we're going to. Um, the Curiosity rover is collecting samples of the radiation levels, the pressure, the atmospheric content, the content of the sand, you know. We have a very clear idea what we're going to, you know. Gone are the days where you get in a ship mm. with a, a guy called Columbus and set sail mm. to the horizon with so. no clue whether the earth is round or flat, mm. whether you're going to find land, whether the air will be breathable at the end of the horizon, mm. you know. These were these guys were truly crazy and brave. <laughs> yeah. And maybe uh, maybe genetically, um, I've got like explorer's blood. This is my mother's theory, at least. Because mm. um, uh, as, as uh, inhabitants of the tip of Africa, you know, all of us have made some kind of journey from somewhere. You know, humankind emerged in Central Eastern Africa. So mm. uh, no matter what your ancestry, somebody walked or took a train or took a ship and uh, arrived here at the tip of Africa. Um, so I think I think that's what we do as humans. We explore. Um, that's why I'm also excited in my in my new job at SAP and in innovation because I believe getting out of your comfort zone and exploring is what drives new thoughts, new creative ideas, uh, mm. new challenges, and therefore new solutions. So to innovate, to really push the frontiers of knowledge and technology, and to celebrate what it is to be human is to explore, mm. whether it's mentally, physically going to Mars or just getting out of your comfort zone, you know, doing something new for a change. Coming and up I, with fresh I like, ideas. I like it that you use, you know, that context because um, I'm busy reading a book about like guys in the 1400s, 1500s mm. getting onto a ship and they're leaving 300 guys and, they, and the ship comes back and the 18 left. And they were, but they were killing each other. <laughs> and it's like sickness and, and stuff. But uh, there wasn't even a world map. And it's basically the same thing. But now you've got, you've got the map. Um, do you daydream about it? Do you do you get yourself and start daydreaming how yeah. you exit Earth? Yeah, I mean, I don't know how I'm going to wait this long. So <laughs> the, the day of departure is set for 2031. So I'm hoping yes, that that's so an long. over. Exactly, I'm, I'm oh. hoping that's an overestimate because I'm ready to leave tomorrow if necessary. Um, or if uh, if the technology would be ready tomorrow, I'd be ready to go in a heartbeat. Um, I think we've got obviously several technological issues to kind mm. of test and and. Uh, 
yeah, check. <laughs> and, and then uh, if we talk budget in terms of, you know, what, what, what do they estimate, the estimate price is going to be or, or price tag on this whole so as you said, Mission. yeah, Mars One with the two Dutch engineer entrepreneurs that announced plans first were sort of the first to make the public announcement. But then there's Elon Musk, SpaceX, mm. who that SpaceX was founded 2001, 2002, also with the primary aim of sending humans to Mars. Mm. So there's several players with different budgets. So Mars One reckons around ten billion dollars US for the first four. This is the minimal model, of course, um, the one-way trip, only four crew on board. Um, not planning to come back, so obviously that lessens the amount of things you need to take with. Elon Musk planning return trips with 100 people on the on board at a time. Um, mm. Boeing also plans to send crew there. Lockheed Martin plans to put like an international space station in orbit around Mars. Uh, there are all sorts of different models, the different budgets, um, and the more the merrier, definitely. And I think all of all of the spokespeople for these different projects have said diversity of approach will be how we succeed. Mm. So this is the era of collaboration, cooperation. It's not the space race, the political muscle flexing activity of the mm. 60s and 70s. Yes. This is the collaborative American effort of humanity like, yeah, uh, in the private private company capacity that will probably achieve this. Of course, mm. with the expertise of NASA, hopefully assisting to get the job done. We've got a th about 30 seconds. I want to talk about you being a cocktail bartender in Japan. <laughs> ah, you found the interesting part of my yeah. CV. <laughs> it's like amazing. We're going to Mars, but I've been a bartender and a cocktail bartender. It actually turned out I was working for Yakuza at some point, but that's another story. <laughs> that's another story. <laughs> We're going to chat now. <laughs> but further, um, I get a few practical questions, the practical side of going to Mars. Um, I hope you find it so interesting as well, but you can also be able to sport in Dino. And this is the name. As you said, we're going to go further with Dr. Adriana Marie, and she is the head of innovation by SAP Africa, but she is also on Mars. I think she's going to make it, you're going to make you're not top 100, I think you're top 4, um, because they're going to be stupid not taking you. A, a question, why are they doing it? <coughs> What is the reason and why Mars? So, I think, uh, let me quote Nelson Mandela on that, it always <laughs> seems impossible until it's done. And I think it, it's completely possible. I think what we do as humans is dream and explore and, you know, realize our dreams through creating technologies to help and assist us to achieve these goals. That's, you know, whether it's a rock or a rocket, <laughs> mm. we've always wielded and uh, manipulated the environment to to achieve our dreams. And this is the grandest dream that we've ever envisaged, in my in my opinion. So life's mm. been evolving on planet Earth for four billion years. And it's taken that long to, to have us developed to the point right now where we have the capability to propose this move to take not only humans, but uh, the plants that we will need to eat and several other organisms along with us to a different planet to establish another world. Mm. So it's certainly not that we're leaving Earth, escaping Earth, uh, saying we're done here and we're moving to a new place. We're extending, we're expanding, we're celebrating um, what it is to be human by, by making this grand move, that we're all going to have the opportunity to watch. I mean, I can't say with 100% certainty that I'm going to be amongst the people to land on Mars first. I'm going to do all my best to be one of them. But for sure, I believe we're going to get to watch this in our lifetimes. Mm. Why don't they practice it on the moon? It's closer or just, I don't know. That's what my mom said, you know. Well, she feels see, a lot more comfortable like, oh, being three days away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the moon's three days away. Well, so, I mean, the Chinese and NASA and several yeah. other space agencies and entities do have plans to do something uh, on the moon. But um, if we want to have a sustainable settlement, Mars being a planet has more resources and uh, okay. a, a greater atmosphere and uh, many more features that make it uh, sustainable in the long term. So yeah, the moon would be a good practice ground, but it may. But it's still it's not a planet. I understand. May not I be a now. more long-term solution than yes. a station. Or, yeah. If it happens to be that you will not be amongst the four that's been chosen to be the first, um, would you still pursue this dream to one day set foot on Mars? Yeah, sure. So I think it's, it's not really about the glory or being first or anything like that. It's really just about contributing towards, in my opinion, the grandest adventure <laughs> ever. And no matter whether you're the first four, the first 400 or the first four million, this will still be, you know, mm. the pioneering uh, outpost of humanity <laughs> as other locations on Earth have been um, in history. Is there someone you're going to leave behind? Someone Se special, seven billion or, someone's or, you're, or, or, or you're staying clear of any relationship until until the last four has been announced. Well, I'm, I'm a firm believer in living uh, each day to the full, so <laughs> I, I take it as it comes. I think uh, I try to live without any regrets. Mm. So I think uh, investing your hope in some outcome that may or may not happen is, is a nice dream to have, but I think mm. you also have to enjoy every day. 
So yeah, that's also why I'm extremely excited to be in my new position with uh, SAP. Yes. So to be, uh, you know, making the most of my time on earth before leaving. <laughs> before leaving. Oh, you've I got think, the vision. Uh, I think so many exciting things are happening. I mean, I don't know if you watched the the rocket reusability demonstrated by SpaceX mm. and Elon Musk, South African born Elon Musk, of course, um, on the 30th of March. So they've already relanded rockets at the drone uh, the remotely controlled drone platform out in the Atlantic Ocean. But on the 30th of March, they managed to relaunch and re-land a rocket that had previously been launched and, and mm. landed. And this is a revolution in spaceflight implemented by a South African-born Elon Musk. And this will really reduce the cost of spaceflight. And I'm excited to be in business because I think happening things are happening so fast now mm. that, uh, you know, sitting at your desk in the research lab thinking about what's going to happen in 50 years is one, is one thing to do, which I have done. But being in business and seeing things happening tomorrow and today yes. even is really at the forefront, I think. And I think what's really important now is actually collaboration between research perspectives, which look at the long-term goals, and business perspectives, which look at the shorter-term goals of how to implement these mm. ideas now. These two things are really converging, I think. And people have very little idea of what tomorrow will bring. Yeah. And I think we need all the collaboration we can get. We need scientists, we need business people, we need diversity of approaches, of opinions. And that's why South Africa is such a good a atmosphere to innovate in and Africa, because we have the mm -hmm. diversity. We have this dynamic changing environment where we constantly have to adapt to survive. And then we have the advantage, I think, compared to more developed, mature markets where um, there's some constancy involved mm -hmm. there. I think we are used to change. That's how we live. You know, this dynamic environment where we're forced to innovate day by day has really prepared us well for this uh, era that we're all living in of mm -hmm. extreme development. You know, my cell phone's bigger than the first computer. Um, last question. Can you please take the president of North Korea with and <laughs> test him? Just like go walk. We can use one of his missiles to shoot something. Maybe I don't think he'll make it. Find <laughs> way there. I, I, I had some more questions. I, we ran out of time because I wanted about, to find out, are you still going to get a salary while you're in Mars? Well, um, cryptocurrencies. If, yeah, if, yeah, if you know your Bitcoin. Cryptocurrencies myself. And you're going to miss a bribe, but maybe one day we'll chat again. I'll try and make a bra on Mars. Huh? That will be the best. Bra you see in the smoke Mars. in the sky then you know. Huh? It's most probably her. I'll, I'll write you a song. Marshmallows up Mars. That's the team we call in here. Because we won't have any meat, so we'll have to write marshmallows. marshmallows. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, you're an inspiration. Family. And yeah, wow, it's, 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 it's fantastic when people make us look stupid. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all of the best with, with, um, yeah, with it's Mars. It's been a pleasure chatting with you. Thanks so Great. much.